On April 15th, 2011, I spent my 21st birthday in jail. <laughs> this is that story. Thankfully, I can laugh at this story now, but there are some real serious consequences that are still following me to this day. If you're turning 21, like, have fun, but please, 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 be smart. Here we go. So I was a student at the University of Oklahoma, and they are very strict about drinking. I mean, the whole state of Oklahoma is. I'm not hating on Oklahoma. I loved Oklahoma. I loved going to school there. The state itself was beautiful, and I was turning 20 one, and I was stoked to graduate from house parties to bar crawls. Not only was I turning 21, I was turning 21 on a Friday, which I thought was totally awesome. Campus quarter Thursday night, birthday dinner and party Friday night, hanging out and playing video games with friends the rest of the weekend. It's my 21st birthday, I know I'm gonna be a little bit irresponsible, so I at least wanted to do one responsible thing that night. I parked my car at my buddy's place, who lived a couple of blocks from Campus Corner, so that way we could walk from his house, party it up, and I could just crash on his couch that night. So it's the night of my birthday, my car's parked, me and my friends, we shimmy over to my favorite taco spot on Campus Corner, Fuzzies, we load our bellies full of dank tacos, some queso. Okay, so when you think about it, it's kind of weird that we celebrate our 21st birthday by seeing how much alcohol we can consume before blacking out. That's like turning 16 years old and saying, oh boy, I'm gonna get six cars and speed 120 miles an hour down the highway because I got my license. The plan of tacos and queso was great. It lasted me through about three margaritas and a couple of tequila shots. At this point, I was starting to enter the brownout phase, which in Clark's dictionary means the moments leading up to inevitable blackout. So after the clock strikes midnight and I am officially 21, I get a call from my sister, which I don't remember, and she said I was very, 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 very excited, like Tom Cruise jumping on a couch excited. Katie once told Seventeen Magazine, yes! Midnight to 1.45 a.m. are a little hazy, but when I finally re-entered my body, I was peeing in a parking lot, peeing on the parking lot. Here's Fuzzy's the taco place. Here's my car. Here's Clark, maybe a quarter mile from his apartment, peeing in the middle of a parking lot. And I forgot to mention, but uh, this doesn't wasn't like some random hidden parking lot. This was a church parking lot. I am peeing in God's parking lot. In my head, I'm in the clear. About to finish my leap. Everything went pretty well. And then I see these tinges of blue and red out of the corner of my eye, and I hear a deep, booming voice. Yo, right there, buddy. Shit. Yep, that's the cops. So I'm pleading with him in some sort of mumbled gibberish. Telling them how it's my 21st birthday and how I did a really responsible thing. At least I didn't drive. At least I didn't drive. In the cop car, all the way through getting processed through jail. Jail. Yep. I was booked into IRL jail. Not the drunk tank. We're talking Shawshank Redemption, Orange is the New Black, Oz level jail. And to add icing to my birthday cake, since I was arrested early Friday morning, I wasn't gonna see a judge until Monday, which meant I wasn't just spending my birthday in jail. I was spending the entire birthday weekend in jail. At the time, I didn't really register how badly I screwed up. I didn't think that when my phone would be ringing nonstop that I was supposed to work at the equipment cage on campus. There were classes that I would be missing. At some point late, Thursday night, early Friday morning, I must have fallen asleep, or blacked out, or both. I woke up under a scratchy wool blanket on a metal bunk bed inside of a withering gray jail cell. And I was wearing what I think you could best describe as traffic cone orange, like nurse scrubs and Crocs. This truly was prison. And my heart starts sinking into my chest. Shit. Suddenly, I hear this gravelly, like Josh Brolin sounded voice from the other corner of the room. Morning, princess. Sounds like you had fun last night. I have a cellmate. Of course, I have a cellmate. So I turn my aching head and I look at this dude, leathery skin, like popcorn kernel yellow teeth, like sunken in cheeks, his 
big bushy beard that I'm pretty certain you could hide a knife in. Great, this is it. This is jail. I was locked in here with my cellmate. No one ever prepares you in life like what to talk to a cellmate about. Who's your favorite character on Parks and Rec? What's your favorite sports team? How's the weather? Okay, so quick pause because this is a part of this story that's disturbing and involves animals. And like, if you've seen any of the videos that I've been in, you know that I love corgis and kitties and little piggies and any other thing that's cute and adorable. And I really, really, really hate this next part of the story. Um, so here we go. I decided to strike up a conversation and I asked him, um, what are you in here for? Please don't say murder. Please don't say murder. Please don't say murder. I got caught fucking a goat. What? My cellmate, the guy that I'm locked in this little box with, is an actual bestiality offender. It helped that I was massively hungover because the extent of what I could actually say to him was something along the lines of, gotcha. So I rolled back on my back, stared up at the metal bunk bed, and just sang myself happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Several hours passed and lunch finally came. I lined up, got my tray from the correctional officer. It was some super stale cornbread. This like nitty goop that I don't even think a dog would eat. I'm like scanning around the room. I'm seeing these dudes with these long scraggly hair and their big scraggly beards. I look just like these dudes. Hung over, I'm feeling like death, I'm looking like death. What am I doing with my life? I could tell that it was kind of turning tonight because the little sliver of light that was coming through in each jail cell was turning from milky white to this like deep rich purple. Another correctional officer walks in and starts listing off names. Davis, Johnson, McCaskill. McCaskill? Is this good or bad? I followed the officer with hesitation, and then he told me that I was going to be having a webcam session with the judge. Holy shit! But, you know, I, I, I had to keep it cool because, you know, prison. I talked to the judge, and she said that what I did was really, really stupid, and not something to take lightly, but also not something to spend the entire weekend in jail for, and that I would be released that night. I actually cried. <laughs> I cried in front of the judge. I was just so relieved and so happy. Sign my paperwork, get my belongings, get out of my god awful Crocs and my orange scrubs. So I walk out of jail, it's like 7 p.m., but I'm still way too nervous to turn on my phone because <laughs> I had a lot of missed calls. I get to my car, I drive home, I go to bed, in my room without a cellmate. And that's, I spent my 21st birthday in jail. <laughs>